Coming up, I got about 15 minutes worth of pass plays taken from past NCAA seasons. Take a look at them. A lot of them deal with free play. Uh, the ruling should help you out with replay this coming season. So sit back, enjoy, and learn. Here's an example of a catch-no-catch -catch play, which is very common on passes these days. You can see that the receiver makes an attempt to control the ball and then turn up field, and the ball gets knocked out of his hands by the defense. He falls on the ball for a recovery, and the ruling on the field is a catch and a recovery of the fumble. This goes to replay and is overturned. This is a bang-bang play, but this is one that should have been ruled incomplete on the field. He doesn't make a football move. There's nothing common to the game. Remember, he must control the ball and then make some move common to the game, and that doesn't happen here. So this is correctly overturned by replay, but this is one that I think we should have gotten correct on the field to start with. Texas A&M, Arkansas, a good job of the official covering the play and giving the strong signal of a timeout and then a catch, stopping the clock and the catch. These are so tough, but here he uses the ground to complete the catch. That's the key. He didn't have total control first and then have the ball hit the ground. You can see it there, the hands on top the ball, then the ball hits the ground. Replay got involved in this and reversed it to an incomplete pass. These are toughies, and um, Replay did a good job to fix that. Ohio State Northwestern, catch no catch, ruled incomplete on the field. Good ruling. You want to watch these at full speed. A catch is control body part down and then having the ball long enough to do something with it. You watch it at full speed. The ball is out. He doesn't have the ball long enough to do something with it. It's incomplete. Whenever you slow it down, it's going to look like he has it longer. And you can see in slow motion, he has control. He has the foot down. He just starts to turn, but he's not able to complete that act common to the game. He doesn't have it long enough to perform that act. So that is an incomplete pass. Good job on the field. Catch no catch, ruled a catch on the field, went to review, was confirmed. The receiver is going to complete the catch while upright, control, get the body part, have it long enough to do something with it. Then he goes to the ground. He doesn't have to hold on to the ball if he completes the catch while upright. He does. He was down prior to losing the football, so it's a catch and down. Good call on the field. Michigan, Wisconsin, the play most talked about. This was ruled on the field as a catch. Good call on the field. Control. Hits the ground, ball moves, but the right hand never comes off the ball. So you got really three steps here. You have control, you get a body part. He's got it when it hits the ground. Ball does move a bit, but ball's going to move. Does he lose control of the ball? So does the right hand, does the ball come completely out of his right hand? Remember, on the field, it was re ruled a catch and you want to leave this as a catch. It's clearly more of a catch than an incomplete pass period and might be one that you would really think about turning over to a catch if it was ruled incomplete. This is a good alert to get the passer beyond the neutral zone when he releases the pass. You can see this on the line feed and also on the replay. Always be alert to this, when, especially when they get in a scramble like this and head toward the line of scrimmage. So your antenna should go up as a possible foul for an illegal forward pass. So good job to get this. Pass it beyond the line of scrimmage when he releases the pass. We have a foul for an illegal forward pass on this play, and you can see that the passer is clearly beyond the line of scrimmage when he releases the ball. You can see this very well on the replay. Remember that the rule is that it, the ball and his entire body must be beyond the line when he releases the pass, and that clearly is the case here. So good call to get this. Referee in the announcement, it would have been helpful if you'd explain why the pass is illegal. There are a number of illegal forward passes, and it may be obvious to most people why this is the case, but nevertheless, a brief statement that the passer was beyond the line of scrimmage would be very helpful. Illegal forward pass. Offense, number 11. That penalty includes a loss of down by Rude. The half is over. We did a good job of getting this intentional grounding. You can only see this on the line feed and it's pretty quick, but you can clearly see that the passer under duress just slings the ball away into an area where there is no receiver. He doesn't get outside the tackle box. The flank official comes in and helps the referee with this. So good job to get this foul for intentional grounding. Let's stay with Michigan, Michigan State. 
Um, throw a backward pass, then a forward pass, and it's called grounding. Just to discuss a little difference in the rules here between the NFL only – the player that initially receives the snap is the one that gets the ability to throw the ball away from out of the pocket. Um, and it does also have to get back to the line of scrimmage. So it's just the quarterback in this situation. So if he hands it off on a sweep and then the runner throws the ball, you know, past the line of scrimmage when he's out of the pocket, it's still grounding because the only person that gets that exception is the person that originally receives the snap. And by the way, they threw it over the head of number 10, but the guidelines kind of, if the uh, receiver is outside the numbers, then, you know, give him leeway. If he's inside the numbers and he throws it away, then you have certainly the potential for grounding, which this was called. Back to Ohio State, intentional grounding. Okay, quarterback in the pocket, ball snapped on the left hash, quarterback in the pocket, throws the ball into an area with no eligible receiver. The penalty for intentional grounding is loss of down at the previous spot. So it's a fourth down play. You just don't see this too often on fourth down. But the bottom line is Ohio State can accept the penalty because it's lost down and get the ball. So they're going to get the ball at the spot of the pass, which is the 47, not the line of scrimmage which would it normally would be on a turnover on downs on an incomplete pass. But because we have the, the, the foul and the penalty enforcement, lost it down at the previous spot, 47-yard line, roll the down. It's going to be Ohio State's football at that spot. So just a little little difference in terms of the penalty enforcement between fourth down and, uh, and first through third. I want you to watch in here. You don't see this very often, but watch this defender here. He's going to grab the end and try to pull him out of that gap to create some space for his teammate to shoot that gap. We call this a pull and shoot. Look at the side judge all over it. He's going to call defensive holding against the uh, the defense there, and and it's you know doesn't happen very often. But this you see what they're trying to do. He's tried that that end is is going to block down. Okay, and he's trying to protect that C gap there, and the defensive player is grabbing him and pulling him away from that, and allowing that his teammate to get in and attempt to get through that gap. So that's defensive holding, not an automatic first down in this situation. Defensive holding in college is an automatic first down if you have, if it occurs on an eligible receiver and it's a forward pass that that crosses the uh, the line of scrimmage. So um, this would just be it's a ten yard penalty, but it's not an automatic first down in the NFL. Defensive holding is five yards and always an automatic first down. Our referee makes a good call for intentional grounding. You can see that the quarterback drops back. He is in the grass, but he clearly throws the ball away. It doesn't reach the line of scrimmage, but also he's not outside the tackle box. So this is a good call, good announcement by the referee to point out this is a spot foul. Lost it down at the spot of the foul. Good work overall. Intentional grounding on the offense, number 13. That's a spot foul, lost it down, fourth down. We get a call for intentional grounding on this pass play, and the referee announces that because the passer was inside the tackle box with no receiver in the area, then the foul is for intentional grounding. Two things to think about on this play. First of all, it's a little problematic to say that there was no receiver in the area because there is a receiver generally in the area, and we allow quite a bit of flexibility there. However, the other part of the rule is that if the passer is or had been outside the tackle box when he throws the ball, then he is allowed to ground the ball as long as it goes beyond the line of scrimmage, which it does in this case. So even though he is inside the tackle box when he throws the pass, in fact, you can see from the replay that he goes outside the tackle box originally and then circles back in. So this should not have been intentional grounding because he had been outside the tackle box and he throws the ball beyond the line of scrimmage. Whether or not there's a receiver in the area, and that's debatable, doesn't matter because the other part of the rule allows him to ground the ball legally had he been outside the tackle box when he throws it beyond the line of scrimmage. So there should be no foul for intentional grounding. We missed a foul for intentional grounding on this play. You can see that there's a lot of razzle-dazzle. The quarterback gets the ball he hands off to another player who also flips it to the second player, and then the quarterback eventually gets the ball back. But he has relinquished possession of the ball during the down, and so he does not have the ability to get outside the tackle box and throw it away. 
So this should be intentional grounding. Even though he's outside the tackle box, remember that if the player who takes the snap relinquishes possession of the ball anytime during the down, then he cannot illegally ground the ball even though he's outside the tackle box. So this should have been intentional grounding. On this pass play, we have a call for an ineligible receiver downfield, and the quarterback rolls out and throws the ball away beyond the line of scrimmage. He gets outside the tackle box and legally grounds the ball. The crew does a good job of communicating to the referee what has happened, and the referee correctly announces that there is no foul for an ineligible receiver downfield because the passer was legally grounding the ball. Remember, this is one of our philosophies in the passing game, so good job by the crew to recognize this and to be alert to this philosophy. There is no foul for an eligible downfield on the pass. The quarterback was legally grounding the ball. It's second down. We initially get a flag for an ineligible receiver being downfield on this pass play, but then you can see that the quarterback rolls outside the pocket, throws the ball away so that it's beyond the line of scrimmage, which means he has legally grounded the ball. So we correctly pick up the flag for the ineligible receiver downfield. A new part of the rule in 2019 is reflected on this play, where we do not have a flag for an ineligible receiver downfield if the passer legally grounds the ball like he does here. This is shown in the rule as an exception to Rule 7.3.10. This has long been one of our philosophies, but now it is explicitly part of the rule. So good job to pick up this flag. Good call for intentional grounding on this pass play. You can see that the quarterback drops back and is pretty much straight back and then just dumps the ball off when he's about to be tackled. It's a little cleaner if the referee has the flag initially and then can get taken off of that flag if he learns from the other officials that there was a receiver in the area. There's nothing wrong with throwing the flag after the conversation with the other officials. It's just better to have it initially. But good job to get this intentional grounding and a good announcement by the referee. Intentional grounding, offense number 10. The quarterback threw the ball down. There was no receiver in the area, and he was in the tackle box. Loss of down at the spot of the foul, fourth down. This is good work by the referee to get this intentional grounding. Good teamwork by the crew to confirm this call. You can see that the passer drops straight back, doesn't get out outside the tackle box, and even if he were, he still doesn't get the ball anywhere close to the line of scrimmage. There's no receiver in the area, so good job, intentional grounding. We've talked about this potential play in the past. We're snapped at the seven, so where are the wings going? To the goal line at the snap, the hole in the mechanic is we have no wing official on the line of scrimmage, and we want every foul, such as here, intentional grounding, to be big. So the wing officials need to have noted here, hey, we're snapped at the seven-yard line. Now, watch what happens. Wings go to the goal line as they must. Quarterback scrambling. He's out of the alley. Does the ball reach the line of scrimmage? No, it clearly does not. It falls at the 10. Somebody needs to come in here and help the referee out. Hey, that ball never made it back to the line of scrimmage. I understand. It's a hole in the mechanic. But when we have a play this big, the wings should say, hey, we snapped at the 7. That ball never made it back to the line of scrimmage we got to go talk to the referee. Umpire here is looking right at it. He's got a good look at it, too. Got nothing going on. He should see that ball drop at the 10. That is three yards behind the line of scrimmage. This is an intentional grounding, and despite the hole in a mechanic, this is huge. This is an easy get, and somebody needs to come in and help the referee out and say, hey, no receiver in the area, and that ball clearly did not get back to the line of scrimmage. I understand if the ball made it to possibly the eight, uh, that would probably wouldn't be big enough. But here, when we're snapped at the seven, wings. Note, every play, where the ball snapped from, especially in goal line mechanics, in case this happens, which it did. Easy call. Just remember, note, wings, where that ball is snapped when you're inside the ten. Did the ball make it back to the line of scrimmage? Clearly, it did not. Let's help out our referee here with some uh, information. We get a good call for an ineligible receiver being downfield on this pass play where the pass crosses the line of scrimmage. Watch the left guard. TV helps us out here by circling the player and showing his path. He's down five or six yards by the time the ball is thrown, so good job to get this as an ineligible receiver downfield. Now, the coach is not happy about it, but when he sees the film, he'll understand why this is called. 
So good call, and those will receive her downfield.